How's it going, everyone? Today, we are going to be talking all about Medicare and money, specifically Part B and Part D premiums and why you might be paying more than the standard premium amount. Now, nobody wants to pay more for the same thing, but if you fall into the scenarios that are coming up, guess what? You might get to pay more. Everyone who signs up for original Medicare Parts A and B is subject to the standard Medicare Part B premium. This premium changes every year, and it's currently $170.10 here in 2022. This topic alone caused a huge uproar at the beginning of the year because that premium went up a lot for some interesting reasons that you can actually watch in a video right up there. Now, most people pay the $170.10 per person per month for Part B, some pay less or not at all based on low income and Medicaid, and then some people get to pay more, which is the topic of this video. Now, when somebody sees a higher than expected bill, it can cause confusion and panic and frustration and anger. And that same person is probably going to notice an additional charge for their Part D premium as well, which only adds to those unpleasant feelings that we just rattled off. So why is this happening? Usually this means that you have an income-related monthly adjustment amount, or IRMA for short, Let's talk about what this is, what it means, and if you can do anything about it. So the income-related monthly adjustment amount isn't a tax or a penalty. It's just an additional amount that you have to pay if the Social Security Administration has determined that you owe extra money because your income was high enough from two years back. That made it sound a lot more random than it is, so let's break that down a little bit more. The government looks at your modified adjusted gross income. This has a whole definition into what it counts and what it doesn't count, and there's actually a link in the description of this video that goes over this definition. To keep things simple, modified adjusted gross income does not count your social security income towards your adjusted gross income figure if you're taking social security. The government does a two year look back to determine your modified adjusted gross income. Your income amount determines which bracket you're in and the bracket that you're in determines how much you will pay for both part B and part D premiums. So for 2022, they're going to look back at your tax return from 2020 to determine which bracket you'll be in for your Medicare premiums. When we move into 2023, they'll look back at your tax returns from 2021. This happens every single year and it adjusts as your income adjusts. The IRMA rate does depend on whether you have filed individually or jointly. So let's take a look at the breakdown here. Those income amounts that you see in this graphic would be from your 2020 tax return. You'll also see that your IRMA rate changes depending on your income. So take a look at your income filing status, then your income range, and you'll quickly be able to see the amounts that you would pay for Part B and the additional amount for Part D here in 2022. So if you filed jointly with a spouse and your income falls within the range of $228,000 to $284,000 as an example, you will have to pay $340.20 per month per person for your Part B premium and an additional $32.10 per month per person for your Part D that dollar amount for Part D gets added on to your regular Part D premium amount if you have a Part D plan. If it is determined that you need to pay an IRMA, you will receive a notice from the Social Security Administration called an initial determination. This notice will explain how the Social Security Administration calculated your IRMA, and it will outline the steps that you need to take if you decide to appeal. That's right. If you believe the Social Security Administration used incorrect information to calculate your IRMA or if you now have a lower income due to a life-changing event, you can appeal. To submit an appeal, you need to complete and submit a Medicare IRMA life-changing event form. It's SSA-44 form, which we have linked in the description, so you don't need to memorize that name. Or you can schedule an appointment with your local social, social security office. Uh, an appeal over the phone cannot be done. So you would need to go in or submit this form. Now you must appeal the decision within 60 days of receiving the initial determination notice. If you do decide to fill out and submit the form, you only need to select one life-changing event that occurred. If multiple occurred, it isn't going to improve your odds by checking more than one of the boxes. These are the exact qualifications that come directly from the Social Security Administration that they consider to be life-changing. So if the language in this next little part doesn't sound like it's coming from me, it's because it isn't coming from me. Number one, marriage. You entered a legal marriage. Number two, divorce or annulment. Your legal marriage ended and you will not file a joint return with your spouse for the year. Number three, the death of a spouse. Number four, work stoppage or reduction. You or your spouse stopped working or reduced the hours of your work. Think retirement as an example. Number five, loss of income producing property. 
you or your spouse experienced a loss of income producing property that was not at your direction. This includes loss of real property in a presidentially or gubernatorial declared disaster area, destruction of livestock or crops due to natural disaster or disease, loss of property due to arson, or loss of investment property due to fraud or theft. If you are following any of the news out there on Yellowstone and the floods that they're sweeping away properties, some of these people may want to know what Irma is about and these appeals. So number six, loss of pension income. You or your spouse experiences a scheduled cessation, termination, or reorganization of an employer's pension plan. Finally, number seven, employer settlement payment. You or your spouse receive a settlement from an employer or former employer because of the employer's bankruptcy or reorganization. Now, the appeal form has step-by-step instructions on how to properly fill it out. It's important to point out that in addition to the form itself, you will be required to provide evidence documenting that your income has changed due to the life-changing event that you marked. Some examples of this documentation are a copy of your marriage certificate if you entered into a legal marriage, a copy of a death certificate if your spouse passed on, a copy of the decree of divorce or annulment if you and your spouse separated, and many more. Now, each life-changing event and any additional required evidence will be explained in the SSA-44 form itself. Now, after you've successfully submitted your appeal, it generally takes 45 days for them to review it, and you should hear a decision within 60 days. However, that can range depending on circumstances, but that's kind of the standard. Now, it's important to note that while you're in the process of appealing, you will still be required to pay the IRMA until the Social Security Administration comes to a decision. If they do come to a decision and decide to change your IRMA or agree with your appeal, you will be refunded for any incorrect amounts paid. All right, let's talk about how you will pay your Part B and Part D premiums. If you're taking Social Security benefits, have Railroad Retirement Board benefits, or benefits through the Office of Personnel Management, your Part B premium will automatically be deducted from your benefits payments that you receive through one of those programs. If you do not receive any of those benefits, you will receive a paper bill Now, it's important to understand that this is frequently billed quarterly. This means that you will get a bill every three months and pay for three months at a time. So be sure that you know if your Part B is being deducted from your benefits payments or if it's something that you need to proactively pay. Now, if you choose to enroll in a standalone Part D prescription drug plan, which most often applies to those who've chosen to go with a supplement plan rather than an Advantage, you will have an additional monthly plan premium as well. These Part D premiums vary depending on the plan that you choose And the additional IRMA amount, if it applies, will be built together with your Part B statements. So how is that? There is the Medicare income-related monthly adjustment amount, which is one reason why your Part B and Part D premiums may be higher than expected and how to appeal it if necessary. Now, there is one other reason why both of those could be higher than expected, and that is because you are getting penalized for not enrolling during specific windows. We have the details around that in a video that should pop up somewhere around here. If you have any questions around Irma or Medicare in general, reach out to your local agent who you trust and he or she can help you. If you do not have a person like that in your life, we are always happy and available to help. So as always, I appreciate you and thank you for watching.